Now, when you awake, you're going to discover that you have really lucked into something special. There's a pair of glasses that I'm actually placing in your hands. You can take the glasses from me. Hold on to them. They're very fashionable. Don't worry about that. Nobody's going to laugh at you. But those glasses are actually super, super special because those are x-ray glasses that allow you to see anyone in the audience naked. The interesting thing about it is the people in the audience don't know that when you look at them that you can see them naked. But as long as you're wearing those glasses, you can look out into the audience and you can see the people without their clothes. It doesn't matter what sort of facial expressions you make, you can be as honest as you want. They can't see your facial expression, they don't know you're looking at them naked, they don't know what you're doing. So to the person I'm touching, on the count of three, open your eyes, one, two, three. Everybody else remain in that wonderful deep state of relaxation. Mark, I gave you a very special pair of glasses. Feel free to put those on and take a look around the audience. They're pretty rudimentary glasses. Excellent. Whoever you look at while you're wearing those glasses will appear to be naked. Take a look around at some of the tables and what do you see? Now there might be some people here, maybe they're not your type, but you know, everybody's got a good body image. And uh, I, we know that you sort of lean towards men versus women, but there's some beautiful women in the audience tonight. And don't worry about your facial expression because the audience can't see your facial expression. They don't know that these glasses are x-ray glasses that allow you to actually look and see what people look like naked. So feel free. Now if you're careful, and if you're subtle, stand up. Would you like to stand up, Mark? Yeah, stand up. Take your time, you're very relaxed. Come over to the edge of the stage. Cool. Now, watch that big step with the rubber strip. Take one step down. Excellent. Focus on your balance, but that'll allow you just just go out a few steps. Don't go any further than say right there where that light is. But you can go and take a slow walk, and if you're subtle looking at people, you'll be able to check them out. Do you feel like going for a walk, or would you rather just stay here and look? I'm gonna go for a walk. Go for a walk? <laughs> While you are walking, you will not leave this cabaret space through either door without asking first. You will not venture past the big, bright light. But you can see from there down to the back of the room, and I'm sure there's some people there you might want to check out. Go for it. Remember, it doesn't matter what reactions you have, because the people that you're looking at, they can't see your reaction. You can just see them make it. Mark, I'm going to leave you to check out the people in the audience. Don't pay attention to what we're doing. But remember, don't go by that big, large, right, uh, large, large light that's hanging from the center of the ceiling. Everybody else up on stage, on the count of three, eyes open and looking at me. One, two, three. Wonderful. One of the things that I actually discovered and learned in Las Vegas is this. It looks very simple, but it's actually called a hypno gun. It essentially works like a real gun, but when I shoot you, it feels like you've been hit with a big bucket of sleep. And you go out fast, you go out strong, you go out powerful, like that. Do not fall out of your chair, no matter what happens. Pull yourself up in that chair. That's it. That was pretty funny, wasn't it? You probably thought she was going to go right down. It works for everybody. Oh, you just think that's hilarious.
Oh, it doesn't work on you. You're immune to the hypno gun. That's because you're in control, aren't you? You think the hypno gun is kind of silly? How does it feel? Kind of silly. Not a problem. She didn't think it was silly. But everything works on people differently. This is a good example. What we do tonight is sort of experiments. Everybody responds to hypnosis. It does not mean that these two people are not hypnotized. It means that they're in control. For people that are worried about losing control, this is an example of why you can come up on stage and participate the next time. Everybody just relax. Alex. Excellent. You just sit there and enjoy yourself. Are you having fun? You're yeah. You're nice and relaxed? You're still happy to be on stage? Excellent. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. I'm going to go check on the pervert. I'll be right back. <laughs> Mark? Mark? I told you not to go buy the big light. Yeah, there you go. What have you seen so far in the audience today? Uh... <laughs> Some cute stuff. Which one are you looking at? Is it the guy in sort of the light colored long sleeve underwear shirt? Yeah, that's hot. Do you know his name? Not yet. His name is Steve. Steven. Hi, Steven. Steven actually lives here in Toronto and he actually has done uh, a lot of writing. He used to be the editor of Fab many years ago. He loves the Niagara Falls area. He used to have a good friend down there, but his friend moved away, so now he has no place to stay. We got room. We got room. <laughs> you got room? Maybe Stephen will come down and visit. Anybody else you're looking at in the audience? Who are you checking out? She's funny. Oh. Which one? Oh. Uh, are you pointing at the guy in red? Yeah. yeah. There. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. How about you wander back to the stage and uh, sit down? Watch that step gently. Go back, rest in your chair. If you'd like to take the glasses off, take the glasses off. If you'd like to leave the glasses on, leave the glasses on. Whichever you're happy with. They're quite beautiful glasses on a fashionable person like you. There. Give your eyes a rest. Just lay them in your lap. They won't go too far. Wonderful. <clears throat> Are you ready to return to sleep? Sleep now. Close your eyes. Relax, lower your head. If all you enjoy is the sense of relaxation, that's fine. It's a wonderful experience to start. Remember that I said hypnosis is cumulative and progressive. So the next time this lady actually gets hypnotized, she will go under faster and she will go under deeper. People, depending on the stage of hypnosis they're in, because there's multiple stages, will respond to suggestions differently. But as you saw, she thought the hypnogun was kind of silly. This lady over here didn't think it was so silly. I'm touching now and only the person I'm touching now. Please open your eyes on the count of three. One, two, three. Eyes open, sitting up in your chair, looking at me. Wonderful. How are you this evening? I'm great. And what is your name? Samantha. Samantha. Thank you for volunteering tonight. I really appreciate it. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? Yes. That little trip to Las Vegas was fun by the poolside? Yes. You were thinking about your sucker friends back in Toronto? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. 
How about if you come and just join me for a minute in this chair on center stage? Move around carefully. It's a small crowded stage. Rest comfortably. Sit down in the chair. Now I want you to plant your feet firmly on the floor. I do not want you to fall out of that chair. But a few minutes ago we were using the hypno gun, right? And it was quite powerful when it hit you. So we're going to do another variation of that. And this is a very special variation because I am going to actually put in your hand like this. Excellent. Now you hold the hypno gun. Uh, and I want you to point it at the DJ booth way down at the back. You can barely see it. Okay? Now, no matter what happens, you're not going to fall out of that chair. It will be powerful, but you will not fall out of that chair. There you go. The unusual thing here is that this hypno gun contains a ricochet bullet. It's actually going to go down back. It's going to hit that white square that you can see that the DJ is holding up in the DJ booth. Hypno guns travel a little slower. Take aim. Make sure you get it. It'll probably take about two, maybe three seconds to get there because hypno bullets are not like regular bullets. When it hits that white square, it's going to rebound and it's going to take about another two or three seconds back here. You'll know when it hits you, I trust. <laughs> On the count of three, one, two, three, fire the hypno gun. <laughs> yeah, there. Boy, that was powerful, wasn't it? There. But you're fine. Actually, it's just a big dose of sleep. Sit back up in your chair, fully relaxed, fully confident, happy to be participating in the show. You're doing a wonderful job. A big round of applause. Come on. For all of our volunteers, whether they're awake or sleep. There we go. How was that? What did it feel like? It felt like getting hit by a bullet. What kind of bullet? Like a regular bullet? Vibrating bullet. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw one of those on Church Street once in the stag shop. Sort of powerful, right? You shot the bullet, it went down there two or three seconds. You could see the bullet coming back to you? Yes. Yes, it was coming very quickly. And then in my chest. Powerful stuff. Excellent. But you're still feeling fine, you're feeling relaxed, you're feeling comfortable, and you're doing a wonderful job. Nice deep breath. And just, just relax. Take you a minute or two to get over the hypno bullet. Everybody on stage on the count of three, eyes open, looking at me. One, two, three. Sitting up, feeling refreshed, feeling fine. Excellent. You've recovered from the hypno bullet. Great. How about returning to your chair there? And we'll make a little bit more space on stage. David, how are you feeling? Good. Good. Are you enjoying the show so far? I think I just woke up. You think you just woke up? You may have. Are you sure? How do you know? I feel like I was asleep. Maybe. Let's try. One, two, three, sleep now. I don't think you woke up. going to switch the next two. We're going to go into supermodel versus the one that's above it. No. 
eyes wide open, everybody looking at me. Wonderful. David? Excellent. Sit up there. I thought you woke up there for a minute, but you're fine. Don't worry. Okay, on the count of three, sleep now. One, two, three, sleep now. Sleep now. Let go. Let your eyes close. Go back to that nice, relaxed place that you enjoy. Wonderful. The nice thing about experiencing hypnosis is the ability to do things that you never do. It gives you a power, it gives you a competence, it gives you a sexiness that doesn't exist often in our day-to-day -day lives. You can actually do anything, anything at all, while you are hypnotized without any negative repercussions. You can be somebody you wouldn't normally be. And when you open your eyes again tonight, imagine that you are back in that little showroom in Las Vegas in front of a very small but influential crowd from the fashion industry. <laughs> tonight, you are at an audition, an audition, And in the audience, oh, I can't move that speaker. Down at the back, where you can't see them, but I saw her sneak in a little while ago, is RuPaul. RuPaul's actually in town, casting for a brand new show. It's not any of the shows that RuPaul actually has on TV yet. It hasn't even been leaked. So that's why she snuck in back at the room and she's sitting back there in a dark corner. Can't see her, but she's there. And with the entire room is an entire audience of fashionistas. They can make or break you in an instant. They are edgy people that know what they want to see in a contestant on RuPaul's new show. When you awaken, when you hear the music, you will be a supermodel. We're going to queue up on the front of the stage. You're going to step off the stage only when I tell you to. You're going to avoid the speaker that's in front, and you are going to do your best supermodel walk down the aisle to the next edge of the stage and back. You will proceed cautiously. Be careful of your elbows. Please don't hit anybody in the head. Eyes wide open, looking at me. One, two, three. You're a supermodel. Come up here with me. Over here. Do your best walk that you can. Round of applause. Come on, people. These people are working for you. They paid to get in here, and they're entertaining you. That's it. A round of applause for David. Wonderful. Samantha, come on up here. You are confident, you are sexy, RuPaul might be interested in you. How do we know? We don't know what to walk. walk the walk. Give her a round of applause! Ask her, take a seat. Mark, come on up. One, two, three, sleep down. Then you're, but you are not Mark. Eyes open, let's walk. <laughs> Don't let Samantha outdo you.
at all. Are you going to let him do it twice? He didn't get to do it. But yeah, go after him. You show him. No hitting, no violence. Pose off, turn, move. Oh, yeah, you can snap. No, 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 no. Take the higher road. David, can you outdo them? No, you're cool. Are there any other supermodels here that actually even want to try? No, you want to try, Alex? I've seen you. Alex, come up here. Alex is like the quiet giant, but when Alex wants to walk, kick their ass. Show them how it's done. And I have one thing to say. You better work. That's right. Alex, back to the stage. Round of applause for everybody. Wonderful. Certainly a couple of different levels of supermodel, and some people who just aren't into the supermodel thing at all. Excellent. I didn't get your name wrong, right? It's Samantha. Samantha. And you're having a wonderful time, Samantha? I'm having a wonderful time. Excellent. Everybody but Samantha, on the count of three, sleep now. One, two, three, sleep now. You just return to your restful state. Sleep now. You take a little bit longer. You have to be edged on, but your eyes get heavy. And then you relax. You're a lot of work, aren't you? Yeah, yeah but you think it's funny. That's all right. As long as you're having a good time, you're doing a wonderful job. Rest comfortably on David. David, you can rest comfortably on Alex. All the hair gel, they may not get apart. Excellent. Thumbs up, Samantha? Wonderful. Sleep now. Wonderful. Dan, we're going to go back into that recall series, starting with the first piece, but not yet. Samantha, you've enjoyed the sun. You've enjoyed the cold and protected yourself from it. You've actually walked like a supermodel and did an amazing job. But unfortunately, you've got a little itch. It's more like a burning. When you hear the next piece of music, well, there's just no way to say it. Your ass just is kind of itchy and burned. And the best way that you can actually fix that burning is if you just go and stand back to shoulders to somebody and just give them a little <laughs> rub and there'll be this instant cool sense of relief. But once you do one person, you have to move to the next chair. When you hear this music, you will actually have that itch and burning and the need to fix it. There's nothing embarrassing about this, it's just a fact of life. It just happened, maybe it's a heat rash from Las Vegas poolside experience, who knows? Maybe it's from having duct tape on your hoo-hoo during the fashion walk scene. We don't know, what. who knows what it is, right? But when the music starts, and every time for the rest of the night that you hear this piece of music, you will carefully move off the stage, cautiously step down off of the step, and then go get a little bit of um, relief. Dan? Samantha, eyes wide open, one, two, three. The burning, the itching. Every time you hear this music, it's a little bit hard to stand. And 
you know that maybe, oh, there's a piece of leather right here. This has relief written all over it. Just a little rub and you'll be fine. Oh, there. You can do it casually and people won't even know you're doing it. But whenever you hear that music, there's that burning that you just have to release. Yeah, yeah. People are very supportive. They know that maybe you're actually in a little bit of pain. Just do it casually, quietly, and nobody will even notice. It's a very tight place, so it's nothing to actually rub up against somebody. There's extra strength in the back balcony. Oh, yeah. Oh, right there. That feels good. Yeah. Oh, just kind of like a cat getting out of an itch. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, what you doing, Samantha? What are you doing back here? I'm trying to do a show. Okay, so just, just go back up and sit down, and uh, I'll just sort of continue on. I don't know what the hell you're doing back there. Oh, relax. Big round of applause for Samantha. So the person I'm touching now, and only the person I'm touching now. Your name is gone from your memory. You cannot say or remember your name. The person I'm touching now, only the person I'm touching now, when I ask you your name, you cannot say it. You cannot remember it. It might be on the tip of your tongue, but it is actually impossible for you to say your own name, as hard as that is to imagine. However, the one way that you can remember your name is if you sing happy birthday to yourself. And when you get to the part, happy birthday to, you'll actually remember it. But all other times when you search for your name, it is just not there. You can't remember, you can't say it, it might be on the tip of your tongue, but your name is gone. But only when I ask you. To the person I'm touching now, and only the person I'm touching now, when I say your name, you are going to have the largest, most throbbing erection that you have ever had. It's like being a 14-year-old boy again, where you can't actually stand it. You know that in those tight jeans, the audience can see it, and you're going to want to try and kind of cover it up. Every time I say your name, you will have the most throbbing, hard erection that you have experienced in a long time, but only when your name is said. On the count of three, the person I'm touching now, eyes wide open. One, two, three, look at me. Calm, comfortable, enjoy the day. And Samantha, you've been doing an amazing job, but here's that hypno gun again. <laughs> Mark, come up with me for a bit. Step down here. Tell everybody what you do here in Toronto. I'm a hairstylist. And how long have you been doing that? 30 years. 30 years. You look very young for somebody who's been doing it for 30 years, doesn't he? Yes. Uh, Mark, just one other thing. What is your name? <laughs> You're a hairstylist. You've been doing it for 30 years. You can imagine your business card. It probably has your name on it. What is your name? Memory's starting to go a bit after 30 years. <laughs> name is Mark. No, that's not it. That's not it. Whoever that is doesn't know what he's talking about. It sounds maybe similar, but no, I don't think that's it. What's your name? Mark. Excellent.
and brr. Go back and sit down. I mentioned earlier that hypnosis comes in levels. It actually, you have to be down at a certain level, probably about the third or fourth level down to actually experience amnesia. Another level is actually to be able to hallucinate and see something that isn't there. Um, upper levels, things like the hypnogun, dust, those sorts of things, great. But the deeper you go, you have to be kind of down deeper to get the more difficult stuff. Wonderful job, Mark. Sleep. Recall that. Eyes wide open, Samantha. Feel free to tip her. Yes. <laughs> oh. Good one. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that was good? You're cool? Everything's back to normal? Sorry. Excellent. Wonderful. Still having fun? Feeling fine? You're doing an amazing job. You're actually like are an amazing volunteer. Have you done this a lot before? Just once? Where was that? Uh, in my high school about 15 years ago. Oh, cool. 15 years ago. About 10 to 15 percent of the population is really highly susceptible to hypnosis. I have a feeling that you're kind of in that little benchmark. Yeah. Which is good for you. That makes it sound like I'm dumb or something. Not at all. No, actually, that she just touched on one of the misconceptions. People actually often think, I mean, I'll, well, oh, almost fell over. Um, people often think that hypnosis has something to do with intelligence, and it actually doesn't. If you actually think about it, concentrating to the point that you're able to relax takes a lot of hard work, but it has nothing to do with intelligence. Hypnosis is about relaxation and your ability to relax. So that's it. <laughs> What's going on down back? Oh, that must be Matthew Simpson. You just like it when I shoot her. You want to come down and shoot her, Matthew? Do you want to come down and shoot her? Excellent. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, it's his. Uh, I'd say stand right here. All right. Now we've done just regular guns, and we've done the reverse bullet. We haven't done a machine gun yet. Oh. Cool. Oh. She's gonna fall over the chair. How do we do this? What's that? A buffer? Tony. Who shows this? You're a lot of work, too. You're just helping, I know. Thanks, okay. All right, you know, I think if we tell her, she'll be fine. Samantha, wide awake on the count of three. One, two, three, eyes open. Would you put your foot up against the edge of this bench just to make sure you don't fall out of the chair? I also don't want you to push on your leg or bend your knee so that you go over backwards. I want you to simply firmly there, firmly there, grab it. Remember that hypnogun with the bullet that was the ricochet bullet. This is not as powerful, but it's almost as powerful. Matthew has a machine gun. One, two, three, Matthew, let go. <laughs> Enough. Uh, okay, perfect. We'll grab it. Thanks, Tony. How are you doing, Samantha? That was hard work, but you're doing fine. Nice deep breath, sit up, relaxing. You're doing amazing. Big round of applause for Samantha. She did all the work.
Matthew just had some fun. Excellent. Her glasses came off, but they're actually on the table and they're fine. So we have them. Eyes wide open, everybody on the count of three. Look at me, one, two, three. Eyes wide open, feeling fresh, feeling relaxed, feeling comfortable. Samantha, amazing job. Mark, amazing job. David, how you doing? Good? Are you enjoying yourself? Do you want to come down here and stand and talk with me a little? No? You're just comfortable there? Excellent. Alex, you doing fine? Cool. Have you said hello to David? Say hello, David. Yeah. yeah. How are we doing down here in the end? Everybody having fun? Cool. You sure you don't want to come down here, David? Excellent. Okay. What's going on? You look a little uncomfortable. No, oh, my hands are cold. Your hands are cold. How are you warming them up? Yeah, okay. Cool. All right. Everybody back asleep? I'll count of three. One, two, three. Sleep now. Yeah, yeah. Sleep now. Sleep now. Sleep now. <laughs> We're going to skip that next recall, Dan. To the person I'm touching now, the person I am only touching now, the previous suggestion that I gave you about your erection is gone. So you're actually able to stand up and walk around. You're feeling comfortable, you're feeling fine, you're feeling confident, you're feeling secure. However, you can no longer remember the number five. The number five is actually gone from your mind. The person I'm touching now, only the person I'm touching now, the number five is gone from your mind. You cannot say the number five. It could be on the tip of your tongue, but it's gone. You will go one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five does not exist. It simply doesn't exist. You cannot say it. It doesn't exist in your mind. It is gone. Person I'm touching now on the count of three, wide awake, one, two, three, wide awake, David, please come down and join me. What do you do, David? Um, I run anti-homophobia workshops. Oh, cool. And that's for corporations or businesses or community groups? All of the above. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. Just put your hand out like that. Excellent. Same with the other hand. How do your fingers feel today? They're fine? Yeah, a little bit chilly, but they're okay. It's cold on stage? A little. Okay. Let's try something. Up like this, out like that. What I want you to do is count your digits from left to right. How many fingers do you have? One, two, three. Six. Right, six. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Because one, two, three, four, six. Can't say five. <laughs> no. One, two, three. No. Maybe there's something wrong with that hand. Let's try this hand. Count them off. One, two, three, four. Six is not right. <laughs> no, that wouldn't be right, because if you had six fingers on this hand, and you had six fingers on this hand, that means you would have 12 fingers. And that doesn't make sense. I don't think you have 12 fingers, and you know you don't have 12 fingers, so let's count them from this side. Okay. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven? <laughs> You're screwed up. There's something wrong. Let's try counting down. 
no, let's not do that. That would be too confusing because you won't know where to start. Because the first time you had six, the second time you had six, yeah. then when you added them together, you had 11. One more time. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, let's do one hand at a time. One, two, three, four, six. It's not six. All right, let's count down, starting with this finger. Six, four, three, two, one. Any which way you do the math, it seems that you actually have six fingers on each hand. No. 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 There's something wrong with your fingers. We'll sort it out later. How's that? Okay. Cool. Return to your chair. Relax. Ponder that. Big round of applause, David. Again, that is the amnesia level of hypnosis. I bet you a lot of you wish you could actually hypnotize people now, right? If you think about stuff. <laughs> David? The next level we're going to go for is hallucination. It may work for all of them, it may work for most of them, it may work for some of them. We'll actually see. To everybody on stage, resting comfortably, enjoying this wonderful state of relaxation. When you open your eyes, please look down at your feet. And at your feet, you will see a small animal. I don't know what type of animal it is because that animal exists in your imagination. It's an animal that interests you. It's an animal that... It might be a dangerous animal, but it's not dangerous to you. It's any animal that you could want it to be. Anything that interests you, look down at your feet on the count of three when your eyes are open. See what animal is there. Feel free to reach down, pick up the animal, and lift it up and hold it, and ex just interact with it. It's an animal that interests you. It's an animal that you always wanted to hold, always wanted to touch. Obviously, it has to be small enough for you to hold. On the count of three, eyes wide open, one, two, three, and look at, down at your feet. What do you see? What are you looking at? Nothing. You don't see anything, do you? No. Do you still feel relaxed? Do you feel... Semi-relaxed. Semi-relaxed. Do you feel you're actually coming out of the state of hypnosis, perhaps? No. You're just enjoying this sense of relaxation as it is, without hallucinating, without forgetting anything. You think the little skits are stupid. Come on, be honest. That's okay. That's okay. But you're enjoying the relaxation. Yes. Hurt. Excellent. And if I said sleep now, you would sleep now. Sleep now. No. No, that's cool. You're actually out of hypnosis. Which is fine. But you still feel relaxed and feel that you're hypnotized. Do you? No, I don't. Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Return to your chair. Thank you very much for participating. A big round of applause. <laughs> Alex, what are you looking at? There wasn't an animal there. I saw it until I opened my eyes. You saw the animal until you opened your eyes. Well, then close your eyes again. One, two, three, sleep. David, what are you holding? A bunny. A bunny rabbit? What's the bunny rabbit's name? I don't know. Okay, you don't need to know their name. You looked down at your feet and you saw a bunny rabbit. Mark, are you looking at something? It's gone. It's gone. What was it? 
He stole my bunny. He stole your bunny? Oh. Do you know the name of the bunny? Nope. No, but you know that he stole your bunny. It was there before. Yep. Yep. Well, sucks to be you. Sleep. What are you holding, Samantha? A platypus. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? <laughs> a platypus. And what is the platypus's name? I would have to ask. It. It's a girl, so I'm going to call it Penelope. The Penelope the platypus. And you determined it was a girl by looking at her, I don't know, palata pussy? <laughs> Lack of palata penis. Lack of palata penis. <laughs> I get paid to do this weird right? Like This is pretty cool. So we got a palata puss, we got a bunny, we got a guy who stole a bunny from somebody else. We got Alex who doesn't see anything, but is certainly in a state of hypnosis, and we got the guy that's a lot of work. <laughs> He's a gig roller. When you looked down at your feet, did you see anything? A lot of light. A lot of light. Yeah. What did the light look like? Uh, just really bright between my feet. People will see different things. On the count of three, everybody sleep now. One, two, three, sleep now. Your animals are safe and secure, but they are gone. They are no longer there. Damn, we're gonna skip the millionaire. When your eyes awake, you're gonna be in a showroom in Las Vegas, and actually you're in a studio where we're actually going to be a contestant on who wants to be a millionaire. David, on the count of three, eyes open. One, two, three. Eyes open, come down and join me. We're just coming back from commercial, and here you are, a contestant on Millionaire. You've won $250,000. You've won $500,000. You've won $750,000. A round of applause for David. David. You are going for one million dollars. You have used all of your lifelines. Phone a friend is gone, ask a buddy, all the, I don't even know what they are, but they're gone, they're just gone, trust me. One question left, are you confident? I think so. You've answered every other question correctly to the point tonight. You've started out with whatever it was, $100, $200, $5,000, you worked your way up. You're a smart man, aren't you? Yes. Are you smart enough to know if you're smart? I think so. Excellent. One question left for one million dollars. You've already said you want to go for the million dollars. Yeah. All or nothing. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. We're going to ask you one question. This is your chance to win a million dollars. But before we start the clock, what would you do with a million dollars? Take a trip around the world. Excellent. Would you take anybody with you? Maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> that could mean maybe me or maybe Samantha. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Okay, that's a fine answer. Well, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. I don't want to put you on the spot. I want you to now take a nice deep breath because you need your concentration. One million dollars, one little question hangs in the balance. A million dollar check for David. David, 
We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Dan, please start the clock. You have 30 seconds. What is 2 plus 3? <laughs> 30 seconds on the clock, David. What is 2 plus 3? A million dollars hangs in the balance. David, you've got all the other levels. You're going to go home with nothing if you can't answer. What is 2 plus 3? Not 4. No, it's not 4. Not 6. Not six. I don't want to know what it's not. I want to know what is two plus three. Not four. Oh, round of applause for David. He was this close. But David actually doesn't feel unhappy. David likes the experience he's having here tonight. The million dollars is gone, but more money will come down the road. A million dollars is nothing nowadays, right, David? No, no, you're not going to cry. You're not happy. All right, relax, nice deep breath, and return to your chair. So close, but yet so far. Anybody that has a camera phone in a few moments, David? Anybody that wants to come up and take a picture, come up and gather here, because we're going to do what it's called, oh, what's it called? Hideous Monster Photo Op. When I awaken these people, they will actually think they are hideous monsters. They will make a face that looks like a hideous monster that they envision in their mind. Feel free to come up and take a photo if you would like, or just enjoy it from the chairs. It's all up to you. To everybody on stage, all of my volunteers, please listen to me carefully. On the count of three, when your eyes open, you will be a hideous, grotesque monster as you envision it in your imagination. And you will make a face to reflect the fact that you are a hideous, grotesque monster. People have come to actually shoot a photograph of rarely seen, hideous, grotesque monsters. Monsters are safe from each other. There will be no interaction between... Be quiet over there. Please? Thanks. Count of three. One, two, three. You are a hideous, grotesque monster. Pose for the camera. One, two, three. Excellent. And everybody's back to normal. Hypnogun. <laughs> Sleep. 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 Yeah. Wonderful. On the count of three, the person I'm touching now, eyes wide awake, feeling refreshed, completely out of a state of hypnosis, your body temperature returning back to normal, enjoying that wonderful sense of relaxation. You've been a wonderful volunteer. You've enjoyed it. You've had fun on stage. Excellent. One, two, three, wide awake. Please stand up and come with me. Your name again is Paul. A big round of applause for Paul, please. To the person I'm touching now, and only the person I'm touching now, which is Alex, should anybody be leaning on anybody else. On the count of three, Alex, wide awake, feeling refreshed, feeling rejuvenated, out of a state of hypnosis, back to the vibrant, happy-go-lucky self that you always are. One, two, three. Please come up with me, Alex. How are you doing? Good. Good. How does that feel? That was like really strange. It was really strange when it screwed up stuff. Yeah. Big round of applause for Alex as he heads back to his chair. The person I'm touching now, and only the person I'm touching now, which is Mark, please wide awake on the count of three, out of the state of hypnosis, body temperature returning to normal, feeling fresh, feeling fine, feeling happy, glad you participated in the show, feeling like you had eight hours sleep, one, two, three, Mark, wide awake. Please come up and join me. A big round of applause for Mark. 
without experience. Different. Different. Excellent. We turn to your table. Thank you for participating. Another round of applause for the first three volunteers. To the person I'm touching now, and only the person I'm touching now, wide awake, out of a state of hypnosis, enjoying the experience, body temperature returning to normal, feeling like yourself, confident, relaxed, happy you took part, embarrassed by nothing. One, two, three, David, wide awake, please join me up on front of the stage. A big round of applause for David. Samantha Wide Awake on the count of three. One, two, three, Wide Awake, go to the state of hypnosis, enjoying the show, having wonderful experiences tonight, very proud of how you actually participated in everything. One, two, three, feeling refreshed, eyes wide open. How are you doing? Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause for Samantha as she heads back to her show. wrap things up in a couple minutes. Um, that's it. You've seen how hypnosis works. People, ordinary people, by concentration, by relaxation, can go to places that they would not normally go, experience things that they would not normally experience, and it's all at the power of suggestion. We spend a lot of times telling ourselves bad things about ourselves. You accept those suggestions exactly the same way. If you have a young child who's five years old and you continuously tell him he's going to be a bad boy, he will grow up to be a bad boy. Yeah. What it actually means is that the things that are in your life that you would actually like to change, and I'm not an artsy, fartsy, airy, fairy, sort of holistic, new age sort of guy, but you know, after I started studying this stuff, I discovered the shit works. It does. <laughs> You can make positive change through self-hypnosis. There is nothing in that I have done here tonight that you cannot learn to do yourself. And there's nothing that I have done here tonight that you cannot learn to do for yourself through hypnosis. You're not going to put them through yourself through what you did there, but there's a lot of other interesting things to do because it is all about the power of suggestion. And I'm going to try one more experiment. I say experiment because it's not a trick. Tricks always work. I'm not a magician. Sometimes experiments work, sometimes don't. Earlier tonight, down at the back, there was a woman I did not know who was sitting with Polo. And she is, I'm sorry, I've already forgotten your name, but from Mexico. I know where her name is. This envelope has been taped to the door the entire night. Before the show, Lali, that's your name. Lally, would you stand up and please make your way here? We're going to take the power of suggestion the other way. I don't usually do this. I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, it's something I've been practicing for a while. And to tell you the truth, I've never done it before in front of an audience. If it doesn't work, nothing risked, nothing gained, nothing lost. Earlier tonight, I took Lolly outside. I gave her a piece of heavy cardboard that is in this envelope. I asked her to write inside that folded cardboard one of 52 cards. Complete random choice. I have no idea what the card was. I have no idea of the number. I have no idea of the suit. Is there any way that I could know what you wrote? No. Nice round of applause for Lally actually before we get started. No, not at all. Excellent. Before we go on, I would actually like you to do a little bit of an experiment with me. In your mind, Lali is from Mexico, by the way, 
uh, Spanish speaker, but understands and speaks a little bit of English. My Spanish is non-existent. <laughs> if something is unclear, please tell me. I ask you to write down on the card, one of 52 cards, any suit, any number. I was not there when you wrote it down. You folded the card and put it into a sealed envelope? Correct. Excellent. You wrote your name on the back of the fold where the envelope was blue? Yes. You brought this envelope without me ever touching the envelope again back into the room and you gave it to your friend and my friend Polo. Correct, yes. Polo then mm -hmm. took this envelope and he taped it to the door where some of you may have noticed it throughout the evening. It's been there since probably about 6.30, maybe 6 o'clock. I'm not sure what time we did this. Do you remember what you wrote on the paper? Yes, I know. You know. Are you certain you know what you wrote on the paper? 100%. Excellent. I would like you to start at 1, 2, 3, and just circle through numbers in your mind, going from ace to king, just one after the other. And keep going, going in a circle. When you get to king, go back to ace. Just go. And what I'd like you to do is, when you get to the number that is yours, just pause a minute. Okay? Pause a minute, think about that number, but pick it up again. Keep going in a circle. And I actually just want to, if I do this correctly, I have no idea what number she's on. I have no idea what number she started with. I don't know how long she's cycling, how long and fast it's going. But this is about the power of suggestion. And you saw me implant suggestions on people here tonight. But this one is going to come the other way to me. Still continue the circle. Please go. One. Excellent. Now I'd like you to focus on the suit. One of four suits. Start with one that you want. And go, whatever it is, hearts, club, diamond, spades, heart, club, diamond, spades, hearts, club, diamond, spades, in any order that you want. Excellent. I call it an experiment because I have no idea who is going to work. Would you open the envelope, please? Do not reveal the contents of that card. Suggestion, superstition. I am not a mind reader. I am not a psychic. I don't pretend to be. And I am certainly not ever claiming to be, so do not say that I have. This is simply an experiment of communication between two people and the power of Lali suggesting to me what card she chose. Do not open the folded card that you wrote the card down on. Pull it out of the envelope. I could be wrong. It's a 1 in 52 chance. I believe, watching Lolly cycle through the cards and cycle through the numbers, that the number is between, it's the nine of diamonds. I want you to open the card. And what does the card say? <laughs> Perfect. I didn't know if I could do that. Anymore. Big round of applause for Lolly. Um, this is stuff that I've always enjoyed doing, but I never really focused much and uh, never applied myself. Work was always in the way. There was always something to do, things like that. Uh, a little more than a year ago, I decided I wanted to do something completely outside the box. I started studying hypnosis. Um, this stuff that we just did here, um, illusions like David Copperfield are illusions. They, they're telling you that what you're seeing is not real. Magic is a trick. They always work. Magicians never fail. This stuff falls into an area that's a little weird, but it's called mentalism. I grew up watching the amazing Kreska. Mm -hmm. And people down back know who that is? Excellent. <laughs> Uh, two years ago, I ended up on stage with the amazing Kreskin in a trick, frankly. He was 80 years old. Last year, we went back to see the show. He was 81. And I sort of thought, he does a half-mentalism show, half-hypnosis show. 
And I kind of thought, well, you know, the first time I was on stage with him at age 80, I thought, wow, if I learned to do this, I have another 40-year career ahead of me. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, and that's why I really started to pick it up. He sort of renewed my interest in hypnotism. He removed my interest in mentalism. Um, hypnosis I've been doing for a while. Mentalism I'm going to continue to do and expand. And maybe I'll do something else in the next show. But Prescott always ended his shows with a very simple saying. Which I just forgot. <laughs> oh, it was so simple. It'll come back to me. I need a drink of water. What's two plus three, David? Five. Yeah. <laughs> Some people don't believe in hypnotism. Um, you saw it yourself tonight, you make up your mind. I'm not here to convince you. We're here to have fun. This is a big host party, it's a living room party. And I'm pleased to say that this will be a monthly party for me here at the Flying Beaver yeah. Pub. Yeah. In February, it will actually be on Wednesday, February 20th. But starting in March, we're going to do the third Sunday night of every month here at the Pub. Array. And essentially, I've always sort of been, it's a phrase that stuck in my mind until a second ago, <laughs> but Kreskin always said that for those who believe, no explanation is necessary. And for those that don't believe, no explanation is enough. Thank you for coming, everybody. Good night. Yeah.